Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Starchivores all over the world. We can see you logging in here from all, literally all over the world. We actually have a guest speaker today from across the world. And uh, as usual, we have Dr. McDougall. We're all very thankful to him for uh, being here just about every week and giving freely of his time to do uh, these amazing webinars where he presents a topic and then he answers some questions. I am Gustavo Tolosa. I am a concert pianist. I sit a lot of the time and even sitting a lot of the time, I was able to lose 70 pounds in less than a year and I've kept them up for, off for over three years. So this is possible. It's possible for you. It's possible for your family. Um, and we're going to hear today why people resist to change. So, Dr. McDougall, without further ado, how are you today? Well, I'm good. I'm I'm excellent, and uh, you know I always like to hear your story. Uh, in fact, I, I get stories. Well, we just put out a Star McDougaller today, which people can read, and uh, I get stories from people from uh, all over the world uh, telling me that they've made huge changes. Their arthritis has gone away. They don't have to be hungry anymore. They love the food. And gee, you know, with all those stories and all those wonderful things that are happening and people are staying away from their doctors and they're getting off their drugs, you'd think everybody would do this. And um, that's the problem. And that's what I learned was the problem back when I first started this, say, in 1977. So what's that like? 40, 50, 40 years ago. You know, I, I just kind of calculated out. I was at a, a, a conference a couple of days ago up in Portland, Oregon, and I calculated it out, and I've almost been in this business for 50 years, and I've known about what I'm talking to you about now uh, for 40 years, uh, and uh, I really have learned very little more about the problem and the solution in the last 40 years, but the uh, one question or the one concern that I had 40 years ago, let's just say 1977, is uh, it wasn't whether or not it would work, whether or not people would lose weight, their bowels would function well, their arthritis would go away, their blood pressure would come down, they'd get off their medication. That was, that was never a concern uh, in 1977, or is it today? Uh, always was the concern, uh, was, always has been, how do I get people to do this? And as a matter of fact, the first book that we wrote, and Mary's been busily looking for it this morning, we hasn't been able to find it, but it was a book called Making the Change. Making the Change. It wasn't called Heal or Stay Healthy or How to Get Rid of Your uh, Type 2 Diabetes and uh, How to Stay Alive with Type 1 Diabetes or anything phenomenal like that. It was called Making the Change because I knew back then the difficulty was in getting people to change their diet from the Western diet to the kind of diet that people have traditionally eaten. I would say nine and a half billion of the 10 billion people who have walked this planet have eaten the kind of diet that I recommend. And nothing's changed. Uh, my message, as you know, hasn't changed. Uh, the truth hasn't changed and so on. So the question is, uh, how do people go about changing? Well, first they must become aware that they have a problem. You know, there are a lot of folks out there that are 30, 40 pounds overweight, and they think they're just fine because the guy that they're sitting next to or the gal they're sitting next to is 60 or 70 pounds overweight. So they really haven't come to the, uh, to the conclusion that they need to uh, make changes. That's one of the biggest problems. You've got you've to decide that uh, you, know, you want to have life different. And unfortunately, like with everything else in life, like cocaine addiction and heroin addiction and alcoholism and cigarette smoking and so on, you gotta kinda, you kinda have gotta reach the bottom in your life before you decide you're gonna pick yourself up and, uh, and get things fixed. So that's an unfortunate thing of human nature. It's gotta get really, 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 really bad before you decide you really, really wanna get things good. And that's for most of us. Now I, I realize there's a whole spectrum where uh, some people just need to think about the fact that their family history is terrible and they don't wanna die of a heart attack like their dad or get breast cancer like their mom. Uh, that may be enough for most of us if you're like me. I mean, things got to get pretty rough before you decide that you're going to make the change. So that, that's the first problem. And the second problem that uh, people have and have to come to grips with is that there is a, a solution. And uh, this is just a, a terribly confusing thing. 
uh, for people I don't know. I do know this discussion has been going on for thousands of years, whether or not you should eat like a king and a queen or you should eat a vegetarian diet. Uh, this is a discussion that you can find in the Bible. You can find it in, uh, uh, well, like I say, for thousands of years, people have been talking about this. It's just that these days, the intensity of the conversation has gotten to the point where, um, unless you take the trouble to look through the truth and really think about things, uh, the messages have gotten so convoluted. Uh, the liars have gotten to be so prolific that uh, people are confused. Uh, just a couple days ago in the Wall Street Journal was another article about how all the experts are wrong. This is what they say. Is all, the, all the experts in the past have been wrong. Everybody's been wrong. and You need to eat more pork, you know, more beef, more cheese, and so on. And the consumer, particularly the casual consumer, says to themselves, well, you know, nobody's figured this out. I don't have any plan. Nothing's going to work. Uh, what if uh, this vegetarian thing's wrong? It's gonna, I've always heard I'm going to get protein deficiency and calcium deficiency. And, <clears throat> you know, we were raised, all of us were raised with this education about the importance of eating animals. And uh, when somebody comes out and says, well, that's why you're fat and sick, uh, they listen, you know, they hear. You know, they think about global warming. They think about uh, all the cruelty to animals. And they think about uh, they've done everything else. They don't drink. They walk. They get a little sunshine but they're still fat and sick. So, so they hear it, but uh, the, the drumbeat from the liars and cheaters and polluters is so intense because they have all the money. And so they can get their PR people to get stories in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and Time Magazine and, and so on that, uh, that uh, the, uh, the needy, the, the people who want to be well, the people who want to have a better life, just plain and simple, uh, let themselves, or maybe it's probably not by choice in many cases, uh, become influenced by uh, people are, uh, are uh, plain and simple about telling the truth. Okay, so <clears throat> you figured out that you need to change. I, I can't take this anymore. Uh, and you figure out that there is a method that's worth trying, which is to eat what I teach, which is a diet of starches, vegetables, and fruits. And now you have to do it. And the problem is with most people is they have to do it 100%. And I've come to that conclusion after working on this for, as I say, nearly 40 years, being a doctor for nearly a half a century. Oh, my goodness. A half a century. Anyway, <laughs> a, uh, a half a century. Yeah, really. Uh, so you've uh, you figured it out. And you figure you need to be the change. You do to do the change. Uh, what I've observed is that people have to do it 100%. I'm sorry. Now that doesn't mean you can't kind of like mess around a little bit. You can't give it. You, there's no reason you can't give it a try here and there. I mean, make some pea soup, uh, enjoy pea soup and bread for one or two meals, and say, well, that was pretty easy, pretty good. You know, you can play around. But if you're not getting the results you're looking for, like losing the weight, getting the cholesterol down, getting the ball movements that you deserve, I mean, all the things aren't working, then just uh, after you're playing around and experimenting and testing and finding a few recipes here and there, then just plain and simple say, I'm not going to do that anymore like I did October 20th, 1972 with cigarettes. I did that. You know, I'm not going to do this anymore. Just say, I'm not going to eat any more animal foods. I'm not going to eat any more vegetable oils. I'm going to eat starches, vegetables, and fruits. And then just do it. And, uh, you know, you'll have to suffer the uh, inconvenience of uh, learning to buy new things, cooking a few new things, and uh, maybe getting some harassment from your friends and so on. But the health benefits are huge. So... Uh, those are my steps to making the change. Now, let me uh, uh, get on to some personal notes here. Uh, uh, Gustavo, I've been talking to you for uh, almost 20 minutes, and you did not make any comment that I look five years younger today than the last time we interviewed each other. Well, I was going to make it in just <laughs> five minutes. You just didn't say it. <laughs> I, I did shave, so I'm back. I'm back to reality. Uh, I've made a change. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been through my uh, my next uh, my fourth <laughs> phase. My next crisis. phase. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, anyways, uh, I'm going to be uh, young, baby-faced, looking for a while. And you know, part of that is uh, I'll be 69 next month, and Mary will be 70 
70 years old, and she's having a, a kind of a difficult time with this right now in terms, I think she is, because she, she talks about it a bit, that she's 70 years old in 10 days. But, you know, the reason I haven't been on the uh, the show here for a couple of weeks or so is we've been up at, uh, at Tahoe, at North Star uh, in California, you know, the, up in the Sierras, we've been up skiing. And, uh, you know, I've, I used to uh, ski a bit, quite a bit, but uh, I've kind of taken a pass on that. I I stay with the water, stay with the windsurfing. But Mary went out just two weeks ago. She went out with the three oldest grandsons. They are on snowboards, and she was on her skis. And every year she goes skiing. But this year, for one reason or another, she decided that uh, there's no reason she couldn't, she shouldn't be able to ski as well as she did 20 years ago. So they went on all the black diamonds. They went every place. She didn't give a second thought about it. Skied phenomenally. And in addition to her talking about, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be 70 years old in 10 days, she says, you know, I skied that entire mountain with my grandsons with not a single thought, not a single fall, not a single difficulty. She was with them or ahead of them all the time. That is amazing. That is amazing. So for us, when we look back, we made the change back in 1977. 1977. Mm -hmm. For us, it's paid off. You know, I can, and, I, and I hear from people all the time. They'll write me. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks say, well, I've been on the program for three weeks and I've lost 20 pounds or I've been on the program for nine months and I've lost. The people who write me and they say, you know, all my friends have disability stickers that they uh, wear in their cars or all my friends are now in assisted living facilities. And I just want you to know, and they're our age or maybe five or 10 years older, they're our age. I just want you to know that I spend my time playing with my grandkids and golfing and doing everything that I want to do and thank you I heard a lecture you gave or a radio show you gave 40 years ago made sense to me I did it then I can tell you I really feel like a successful doctor all right so that's one of the personal changes I wanted to make sure you noticed is that I've <laughs> gone through another midlife crisis and the beard's gone for a while the all second right. the second thing I wanted you to know is we've been dealing with a problem this morning uh, a problem a conversation an issue a uh, uh, now, something, something great. Uh, we're picking the grandkids up from school today. Uh, we went to our oldest grandson's basketball game last night and so on. So we're picking them up from school today. And when they come home from school, uh, they're always hungry. And so Mary's thinking, well, she usually makes pea soup. But then she says, well, you know, Jason loves the pea soup and the bread. But uh, Benjamin and Ryan, not so much. And they eat, you know, other things, uh, not quite as healthy and tasty. I mean, there's not really any, any unhealthy things in our house. But she said this morning, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make mashed potatoes and gravy and um, broccolinis because they love that. And so that's what the kids are going to get when they come home from school. Well, I just want you to know, you can live on mashed potatoes and water alone. By the same way, my oldest grandson, who's now 12, almost 13. Oh, my goodness, you can kind of imagine mm -hmm. how it goes. When he was born, I was uh, on stage at an advanced study weekend, and I said, this was like almost 13 years ago, I am now a grandfather. But he was one of, he's one of the biggest kids on the court. So uh, <clears throat> you can make it simple. You can make the diet and plan the meals simple, and that's uh, integral to changing. This is not complex. You can live on potatoes and water. Potatoes and water? Would anybody ever live on potatoes and water? There is this guy from Australia who has made world headlines. In fact, I was on the doctor's show with him about two months ago who has done something so radical. It's so radical. In fact, it, it is something that uh, millions of people have done in the past because they had no choice and something that they've done several times in uh, uh, metabolic ward experiments mm -hmm. where they have fed people the diet that this this Aussie isn't that what they call them Australians this right. this Australian guy the guy from down under I mean anybody from from the other side of the world would I mean would they ever do this but he has and he's made huge huge headlines and talk, think about this when we're talking about making the change you're wondering what to do you, you, you know it seems complicated to you you know, quitting smoking is just doing one thing, like just going to clean air. Quitting drinking simple, like just going to water. But how can we make it so simple to change your diet? I want to introduce to you Andrew Taylor, all the way from Australia, who just did that. He just changed his diet. And if you came over to our house today, would you eat the uh, 
the, the broccolettes that Mary's, the little broccoli sprouts Mary's uh, uh, fixing for the grandkids, or would you just stick with your usual diet? <laughs> the mashed potatoes would be fine for me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what... Thanks for having me on. Well, well I'm <laughs> no, That sounds like a great meal. Mashed potatoes. For now, I'll just leave the broccoli. Maybe I'll include them when this challenge is over. <laughs> so it's only potatoes. Yeah, I have, I have a little bit of herbs and seasonings and like a, maybe a bit of tomato or chili sauce or something like that for a bit of flavor, but essentially, yeah, I guess 99% of my nutrition is coming from potatoes. Well, can, give, give, it's give been us amazing. A, <laughs> give, give us just a little background, if you would. Would you show you have uh, on your iPad, you have a picture of you, what was it, seven months yeah. ago? Uh, from January 1st, you know, on the, the big, I guess you can tell which is which, there's January 1st and there's about a week ago. Oh, okay. And can that's you see that right? Yeah, 100 days, how many pounds? I'll show you another side on my So that's, uh, these, the, at the moment I'm up to 113 days, but this after photo here is taken on day 99, and that's after 32 kilos. And right now I'm up to 34 kilos gone, which I think is probably getting close to 80 pounds. Right. Okay. And, and do you like what you're yeah. doing? I'm loving it. It's fantastic. Um, uh, when, when I started, I thought it was going to be the hardest thing I've ever done, and I wasn't sure that I'd be able to do it. But, uh, but after two weeks, yeah, it, was, it got easy. The first week was hard, and then the second week was easy, and it's just been easy all the way, all the way through. Okay, uh, there is. Uh, I think. I think, um, and I, I. We have had very few conversations, not enough. But I think I. I was an influence on you when this all started. You were. So the the original idea came from me thinking about how in the past I'd lost. I'd, I'd lost weight and then put it back on and then lost weight and then put it back on and I was wondering why I just kept putting the weight back on and I had a realization that I had a food addiction. So then I started thinking about addictions like smoking, like you were talking about and like drinking and like drug addicts and how if you had one of those addictions, the best thing you could do is to stop those things entirely. Now obviously you can't do that with food so I thought maybe there's a way that I could quit all foods except for one and, and live healthily. So then I started searching the internet to find if there was a food that I could I could live in a healthy way on. And one of the first things I saw was a video of yours, Dr. McDougall, which was in, uh, on YouTube titled "Potatoes: The Perfect Food." I think it was like a three-minute speech you gave, or something like that, about how great potatoes were and the history of potatoes in human nutrition, and and you know the Irish eating potatoes before the uh, before the potato famine and. All sorts of things you talked about. It's amazing that you cram so much information into three minutes. But uh, anyway, uh, that was that was the start of it basically. And then I read the Starch Solution, and uh, and and I've read Dr. Wrestleston's book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and some other books too. And and uh, and I read some scientific literature that I found through you. Then I, I followed what you had done and, and read the links to the literature that you had provided. And and uh, yeah, I was convinced that it was. A healthy thing to do, so I decided to give it a try. <laughs> have you uh, have you seen Matt Damon's movie, The Martian? Yeah, I saw it last weekend for the first time. Yeah, so before when I started, I hadn't heard of him yet, but uh, yeah, last weekend I finally thought it's about time I watched this movie. It was good. <laughs> yeah, and in today's paper, there's actually a discussion about people who are, you know, trying to colonize Mars. And uh, what they're going to use is the food potatoes. I mean, that's what they plan on being the diet of the first explorers, human explorers that go to Mars. So okay. all, all this is not a coincidence that people in past history have lived on all potato diets, that you're doing an all potato diet. Uh, the experiment I think you probably read by Kahn, published in 1928, talked about a man and a woman who lived on an all potato diet. And here at six months, on an all potato diet, they said they had no desire for change. They were perfectly satisfied with their food and they were determined to be in excellent health. And I've heard you say you're perfectly satisfied with your food. And uh, how's your health? 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed that I would be perfectly satisfied with potatoes before I did this, but now, yeah, it's it's strange to me, but yeah, I'm 113 days in and I'm totally fine with just eating potatoes. And uh, yeah, my health's fantastic, I'm sleeping better, I've, I've got joint pain, or I had joint pain from old football injuries for the last 10 years and that's all gone and... Uh, last year, I was even I was diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety, and that's really as the last couple of months has just not been any trouble. And yeah, I feel fit. I'm getting stronger. I'm exercising. I, I've got. I haven't got a single bad thing to say about this. Everything's been amazing. Any uh, any blood tests that you've had that have uh, made change? You've seen changes in and um, I, I yeah. Know you... yeah, we had blood tests. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We had blood tests done uh, 14 days ago on day 99, and uh, yeah, everything's everything's improved. I've got better. Uh, um, what do you call it? Triglycerides are better. The LDL. I can't remember what how everything's got, but yeah, my my cholesterol has improved a whole heap. I think trying to convert it from the Australian numbers to the American, but I, I think my cholesterol was over 200 in the American value, and now it's around 120. Um, yeah, my blood sugars are perfect. All of my everything we could measure was basically perfect. So you are. There's only one that, one thing that raised a bit, and that was uh, homocysteine, which apparently raises when you are uh, when you are uh, um, losing weight fast, and that's something that happens. Yeah. Well, that would be the last thing that I'd worry about. Uh, uh, Gustavo, you were going to ask a question, and uh, when when we finish your question, could we get back to? I want to know. I mean, you've become world famous, Andrew. Andrew Taylor. Yeah. If you look it up on the internet, this man has become world famous. Why did this happen? And tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah. Well. When I started, I didn't have a Facebook page at all, and I didn't have a website. I just started with a little YouTube, just just for documenting my own experience, so I could look back on the year later on and see what I'd done. And through January, maybe I'd had a hundred views in total. And then, in uh, at the beginning of February, I got called by a reporter, and I, and I don't know how he found me, but. Uh, yeah, he wrote a, one article in the news in a big news website in Australia, and then the next day after that, it went totally crazy, and uh, and it went viral worldwide, and it's been been a really strange time. I didn't think anyone would be interested in this at all when I started, but uh, yeah, it's been funny, and I think um I think there's two reasons. One is obviously weight loss. Like people are interested when someone loses and a lot of weight in a quick amount of time, they get interested, and and second because. Oh, it shouldn't be, but obviously this is a strange thing to do. This is not somewhat something anyone or most people have not heard of anyone doing this before. So, and and on top of that, people tend to view potatoes as being an unhealthy food. So suddenly someone's doing really well off eating this supposedly unhealthy food, and it's yeah, I think it's a combination of factors, and those things are the big the big thing that's made it catch on. But yeah, thinking about it now, it makes sense that people are interested, I guess. But when I started, I, I, I had no idea that this would happen. <laughs> yeah, it's something no one would know about unless they watched the movie The Martian with Matt Damon, or they were uh, yeah. people in history and understood that people in the Andes in South America lived on all potato diets, and that uh, when the potato was brought to Europe, I think it was in the 1500s, it became popular in the 1700s, uh, it changed all of Europe. It uh, solved malnutrition in uh, Europe. It uh, uh, improved the, the health of people. The population of uh, Ireland uh, doubled when the uh, potato was introduced. Uh, you know, a, 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 if you are uneducated uh, in terms of world history or you, I mean, you'd have to be shut up uh, uh, from the from the outside world, not to understand the importance of potatoes, not only in the past, but in the present, and uh, this is what uh, all people are looking for in terms of future uh, space travel, colonization, and so on. Uh, it's really important, and of course, you know, my big pitch always is the environment. I was reading this morning in the paper that uh, I used to do quite a bit of diving off the coast of. Uh, California, not quite a bit, but some of my diving, is all the kelp is gone. All of the kelp is gone. 
and all the starfish are gone and the sea otters are starving and sea urchins have replaced you know the sea life and excuse me ladies and gentlemen if you won't go on an all potato diet like Andrew's eating and potatoes and broccolini like the grandkids are going to have this afternoon when they come home from school for your own health to lose weight have a good bowel movement get off all these lousy drugs you're on and believe me most of them you can get off of there are a few you need uh, if you won't do it for those reasons I mean think about the fact that all the kelp's gone and uh, and unfortunately things are going faster than anybody ever predicted but the potato could stop that in fact in 2008 the World Health Organization could declared that year, 2008, the international year of the potato. For the very reasons we're talking about is that the potato, like it has in the past, saved millions of people's lives, cultures, populations. The potato may save uh, the human race and the planet Earth. And uh, the, what you have done, Andrew Taylor, in terms of getting this message out has been huge, absolutely phenomenal. And I'm so grateful that you uh, would get up so early in the morning and, and share that story with us uh, because uh, the importance is, uh, is worldwide. I hope everybody listening and everybody you can tell this to, you'll go out and make the message absolutely clear. The potato, the potato could, as it has in the past, save planet Earth. If we can't save planet Earth, maybe it'll save the colonies on Mars. I mean, whatever. But the potato has to be... Uh, it has to be placed back in its prominent position and no longer maligned and misunderstood like it has been in the past. That has to stop. And Andrew Taylor, thank you for that. Gustavo, you had a question for him. Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, thank you, Andrew, for getting up so early to, to do this. All right. Um, I think a lot thank of people. You I think a lot of people here are going to uh, ask a question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Uh, could you give us a sample uh, of many of what you eat uh, every day? Like, what do you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And I doubt it that it's too complicated, but can you give us an idea of what it is that you eat? Or how do you make the Yeah, potatoes? no problem. So, yeah, so it's... It, <laughs> It, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, I just make a, a big amount of potatoes in one of three ways. It's either mashed potatoes or boiled potatoes or baked potatoes. And I might make like six kilos at once and then I just eat them for four or five meals in a row. And then when it's finished, I just make some more in another way. And, uh, and it's basically it's all potatoes and with a small amount of uh, herbs and spices and, uh, and fat-free sauces. Uh, just for a little bit of flaving, flavoring, uh, but really it's uh, yeah, it's it's all potatoes and it's very simple. <laughs> all right, we're well, good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, th thank you. I do want to say something and uh, look in my eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully they're wide open. I want you to understand that potatoes provide all, all of the nutrition you need, except for B12. And if you eat dirty potatoes, then you probably get your B12. <laughs> But anyway, they provide all the all of the potassium. In fact, they're very high potassium. They are called the anti-scurvy vegetable. They provide all the vitamin C, all the protein, all the calcium, even all the fat you need, even though they're very, very low in fat. They're less than 1% of the calories as fat. I mean, they have before, as I told you, there are millions of people in the past who their existence depended upon potatoes, like in... Uh, the change of the century between 18 and 1900s. Uh, the people in Russia and Poland, that's all they had was potatoes. There are many times in uh, history uh, where all that was available was uh, potatoes in the Andes. I just uh, read a book about South America and they talked about the Ice Princess. The Ice Princess, and I probably saw the Ice Princess when we took a McDougal adventure trip to uh, Peru about 15 years ago. I just can't remember, but you can look her up. Uh, she was an ice... Uh, she was a, 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 a lady who lived in the Machu Picchu area, a lady. She was a young girl. She was probably 13 years old. And young girls were distributed by the, uh, the, the, uh, the aristocracy, the kings, and so on, uh, to, to, to perform different functions. And one of the functions would be uh, to be a sacrificial being. And uh, she was picked for that group to be sacrificed uh, up on the mountain in a volcano 
And for some reason or all, she got frozen in ice 500 years ago. And they found her, thanks to global warming. They found her, oh, let me just guess, maybe 20, 15, 20 years ago. And they took her uh, in the ice block and they put her in a museum, which is in Peru, and kept her frozen. But she was in perfect shape. Her clothes were in perfect shape. Her hair was in perfect shape, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, she was about 13 to 15 years old when sacrificed but perfectly preserved, and they analyzed her hair, which was kind of interesting. In the discussion about her hair, the hair uh, keeps minerals, and of course it takes, uh, it took her whole life to grow that hair that she had. They took a strand of her hair and they measured uh, the minerals in that strand of hair, and they saw that her diet was, uh, uh, was uh, primarily starch, potatoes and corn and things like that, uh, up until a year before she died. And then a year before she died, they could see the introduction of animal foods into her diet. As she was taken into the royalty in preparation for her sacrifice a year before. So, you know, 500 years ago, all the common people lived on starches. Uh, the kings and queens, they had animal protein in their food. The ice princess, look her up, proved it when they analyzed her hair. This is nothing strange. Uh, so. Getting back to the original theme of this today's program, and we'll let uh, Mr. Taylor grow uh, in just a second. Uh, getting back to the theme of this particular program about making the change, do what Andrew Taylor did, do what the Ice Princess did, do what hundreds of thousands of people have done in various times in history in various parts of the earth just to survive. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dying. Or maybe not you, but your friends so are. They are know. dying. They are suffering. They are dying of heart disease and cancer and constipation. And so is the world around us. This is just as crucial as it was a thousand years ago. And the potato, as Andrew has shared with us, you don't have to think about anything. You just cook the simple potatoes and eat them. And there's no nutritionist, no diet. Uh, dietitian, no doctor, no scientist is going to tell you anything different than I told you, unless they lie, or unless they're ignorant. Right. So, anyway, uh, Andrew Taylor, go out and change the world. Man, you're doing a phenomenal and job. And you plan to do this for a year, right? At least. Probably. Yeah, that's right. My, my plan is to go and I uh, started on the 1st of January and I plan on finishing on the uh, 31st of December and, uh, and I'll eat something else on the 1st of January next year. Oh, and, wow. uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Dr. McMillan. And you keep doing what you do as well. It's, uh, it's, you're doing an amazing job. Well, and, Andrew, the, uh, just, a, just a couple of questions that people are asking. Do you, do, do you eat any other kind of potatoes, like sweet potatoes or uh, purple potatoes? I mean, or is it just plain potatoes? Yeah, I eat all potatoes, sweet potatoes, purple potatoes, everything. Everything that's got the word potato in its name, that's what I eat. <laughs> not potato <laughs> chips, though. <no. laughs> well, no, because I'm not eating any oil. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no potato chips. Very and, good. And even though sweet potatoes and regular potatoes come from completely different families, uh, they are both, they both share the fact that you can eat either of those. You don't have to eat both. You can eat either or any kind of potato. You know, I, I heard uh, or read a couple of days ago that there are like 1,400 different varieties of potatoes in Peru. Uh, you know, I learned it as four or five hundred different kinds of potatoes, but there, but the number is in the hundreds of different kinds of potatoes. It makes no difference what kind of sweet potato, or what kind of potato you eat, or any combination. Uh, the the food uh, in any of them is complete. Any of these underground storage organs, I have complete nutrition for you. You just have it, as I say, you have to get a little filth in the form of B12, and we'll do that some other day. That conversation, but uh, don't let anybody kid you. Uh, you're being poisoned by eating animals and animal secretions and oils, and you can solve it. You can make the change if you want to do it simple, just like Andrew Taylor did, and that is just sit down and eat potatoes, just like I did in 1972. I said, no more cigarettes. Just say, all I'm going to do is eat potatoes, and you will thrive. Notice he said he didn't restrict in the amount of food, enjoys the food, eats as often, and as much as he wants all day long. That's a program you can live with. That's it. It's sustainable. Uh, it's a yeah, I'm eating 
Sorry. No, it's okay. I was just going to say I'm eating three and a half to four kilograms, like eight pounds plus of potatoes a day. I'm definitely not going hungry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's for that reason. This is a really great plan for me. And yeah, I am supplementing B12 too. Yeah, uh, back before the uh, potato famine in Ireland, uh, the average uh, working, hard working, probably much harder working than you and I, definitely harder working man uh, ate uh, 10 pounds of potatoes a day. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's before the potato famine. The uh, that's what that's what the average intake was. I mean, that's what they had. And they also described the Irish women during that period of time as particularly lovely, the potato eating women. As particularly lovely in their in their beauty and appearance, uh, and as I say, the the population of Ireland and several other places in Europe doubled when they introduced potatoes. Like in 40 years, the population doubled because of, because of the nutrition provided by the potato. Uh, Mr. Taylor, you are going to change the world with your all potato diet. I have no doubt. And take it, take it to <laughs> Thank Mark. you, and it's. And it's and it's, and it's partly due to you, like I said, so thank you for what you do. And if anyone wants to follow what I'm doing, I've got a YouTube and a Facebook page, both called SpudFit, and I've got a website called SpudFit.com. Great. 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 Anything, anything else you want to, to tell our listeners so they can spread the message to other people about what you're doing or how they can contact you? Uh, any, other, uh, any other highlights that I, I think would be well worth uh, letting people know. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, if they want to contact me, then my Facebook page, SpudFit, or my website, SpudFit.com. There's also an FAQ page that I wrote on my on my, uh, on my SpudFit.com, which answers lots of the questions that people will have. But, uh, yeah, the main thing for me is that just good nutrition is so incredibly simple is what I've learned this year. And if you want to make changes, then I feel like, I'm a very much an all or nothing kind of guy, so I can't do these changes in small incremental amounts like lots of people like to. For me, it's just do it or don't do it. And if you want to make a change, then go all in and make a change. Yeah, I feel I feel the same way. Um, we did the doctor show together, which was a, a worldwide uh, t uh, TV show. Any other TV shows you have coming up? Uh, I've. There's a few. I filmed a TV show yesterday in Russia, which will be on at some stage, and I've been on TV in Australia a few times, and New Zealand, and Ireland, and England, and it's hard to keep track of. <laughs> yeah, how to become famous overnight, whether you want to or not. Just, just eat a whole potato. Just eat a potato, right? Andrew, could you type? Could you type uh, for the listeners here in the chat box the name of your website and your YouTube because some of them can't understand. Would you do that for us? And Dr. McDougal, some people are asking about, um, and this is of course a medical question, about diabetes and, and potatoes and would you just say a few words? Sure. sure. Uh, worldwide, historically, however you want to look at it, uh, the people who are potatoes eaters, potato eaters do not get type 2 diabetes. It's plain and simple. Uh, the, where people get confused is potatoes that are served in most Western countries are, uh, are full of grease. Uh, they go from like, you know, less than 1% fat to 40% fat uh, when they make french fries and potato chips out of them. Out of them. So that's where, that's where the confusion comes in. So, uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and for diabetes, and I'm sorry, specifically for yes. diabetes, for type 2 diabetes, if you went on an all-potato diet like Andrew Taylor did, and you can tell your newspaper this, you can tell your doctor this, you can tell your favorite dietitian this, if you have type 2 diabetes and you go on the diet that Andrew Taylor uh, just described to you, an all-potato diet, you will cure, you will cure, cure, cure your type 2 diabetes 100% of the time it will go away because type 2 diabetes is a result of overnutrition and obesity, which you will solve uh, both those problems when you make the switch. Yes, uh, uh, however, some of you don't have really type 2 diabetes. You have uh, uh, some insulin insufficiency, which I call type 1.5 diabetes. You'll know that is the case if you don't already know that you have insulin sufficiency when you get too thin, <laughs> which you could do. Uh, 
uh, on any kind of diet with uh, in insulin insufficiency. But I do prescribe insulin for people who have partial pancreatic insufficiency and, of course, full pancreatic insufficiency, which is type 1 diabetes. But again, ladies and gentlemen, watch my lips, look in my eyes. It's 100% curable on the diet Andrew Taylor just told you, type 2 diabetes is. Or you don't have to be that, uh, you know, that particular simple, uh, that, that specific and simple. As we teach here every Thursday, on the website, uh, as Mary's and my diet isn't all potatoes, even though we're having potatoes and broccolini uh, this afternoon and this evening to eat. Uh, yesterday, Mary made a, a, a bean, a type of stew. And by the way, we had that with potatoes. She gets these little potatoes from the store, boils them, and puts the, the vegetable soup or vegetable stew she makes. When we were at my son's house, who's in Portland, who was on the show here a couple, few weeks ago, we were up there this past weekend with the other two grandkids. And uh, Mika McDougall, who's a family practitioner, uh, Craig McDougall's wife, who, Craig is a board-certified internist in Portland, <clears throat> she made this amazing noodle dish. Uh, she is a, a, a part Japanese, half Japanese, half Caucasian, but her background is very solid in, uh, in Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern culture because half her family is uh, from Japan. But anyway, she likes to make noodle dishes, so she made this phenomenal noodle dish, and she had some vegetables and sweet potatoes in it, and I bet it didn't take her work time to put it together any more than 10 minutes. And it was so good that uh, Mary and I are thinking of doing a, a little recipe uh, a uh, little, little recipe section extra to put on the website, and that's going to be one of the recipes. So uh, don't think you've got to eat an all-potato diet. You can eat a diet based on noodles, uh, based on rice, uh, based on corn. I just have to tell you that a diet based on legumes and grains is uh, deficient in vitamin A and C. So you'd have to add the broccolini a little bit or maybe an orange uh, to a, a grain or legume-based diet because you need the extra A and C. Those are above-ground storage organs that I'm talking about, uh, grains and legumes. But uh, below-ground storage organs like potatoes and sweet potatoes, bulbs and corns and so on, Below ground storage organs, they have everything. They have all the C and the A and everything you need. Uh, so I just want to make that distinction. But don't think that what we're trying to teach you is an all potato diet. Uh, works works for Andrew just like for me. I don't smoke three cigarettes a day. You yes, know, can I say something too? So yeah, the the I'm not trying to teach an all potato diet either. I don't think that you have to go and eat all potato diets. This for me is a stepping stone. To, to a way of getting control of my unhealthy eating habits and and just stopping food for a bit and allowing my brain some space to, to not have to think about food all the time. But my ultimate thing to do when I finish this Spud Fit Challenge year is to then switch from that to the starch solution diet. That, that's what I'm aiming for. So... Yeah, you don't have to do all potato diet. I agree. <laughs> but 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 this is working out for you, and you you, know, you might think about it like a, a cleansing. Uh, you know, like people with alcoholism, right. they sometimes have to go to a detox center. Uh, uh, exactly. Some people, some people go through a water fast. You know, Doug Lyle, who speaks here, and right down the street from our our clinic is True North, which is a water fasting clinic, and. You know that that break from uh, old habits, uh, going through a water fast, works for some people. And for you, in fact, there's been uh, as an offspring of I think what you're doing and and part of what I'm doing. There's a a potato cleanse diet out there. Have you heard about that, Andrew? I have. Yeah, about a month after I started, somebody uh, told me about that, and I joined the group on Facebook. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a great little group of people doing a. I guess it's a mostly potato diet with some non-starchy veggies in there too, and yeah, that's also a great way to go if you want to if you want to eat healthy. Then yeah, that potato cleanse group is a great idea too. Yeah, I think I think her name is High Carb Hannah. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah, High, High Carb Hannah, and uh, I have not met her. I, I don't even know that I've had a conversation with her, but uh, uh, she's doing uh, a much more varied diet than you're even doing but they call it a potato cleanse. And uh, so, yeah, there's another area of support is go to High Carb Hannah, and you'll find her. She's a, a very pleasant uh, woman. The, the viewing I've had of her on uh, YouTube, uh, very intelligent, uh, quite a strong person in terms of her convictions. 
So there are lots of people out there who are getting into uh, whatever they can do to save their lives. And basically, we're talking about saving your life. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as a as a heroin addict or a uh, an alcoholic, uh, this is as uh, as important and and certainly more costly to you and your family than alcoholism or cocaine addiction. Uh, the fact that you're suffering and dying from these dietary diseases. So take it that serious. And uh, if you have to go through a cleanse or a water fast or whatever you have to do to get started, I mean, whatever it takes, just do it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very great. You know, you know what my, my dad used to teach me, he said, you know, when you put people in prison, you feed them just uh, bread and water. Uh, bread pretty soon starts to taste like a steak and water tastes like wine. You know, <laughs> you know, have you heard that saying before? Yes. It's how you may have uh, heard that. Yeah, you know, I, I read it. I read a book recently called The Potato Hack, and in that there's a great quote that says, if you're not hungry enough to eat a cold-boiled plain potato, then you're not hungry. You're not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, uh, And by the way, we'd be happy to lock you up and feed you much more than an all-potato diet. <laughs> you know, we do that in Santa Rosa at our clinic. But uh, it, is, it is, ladies and gentlemen, it is that simple if you want to get started. It is. Tell uh, us, it, Dr. McDougall, tell us about, since you're talking about the program, tell us about the May 13th, 14th, I think. Oh, yeah, we have, a, we have a, the, the least expensive, most intense event that we do once a year coming up May 13th, and uh, there's uh, still a little bit of room, not much. <clears throat> it's almost full. Uh, but it comes up May 13th through the 15th in Santa Rosa, California. It's where all the, the team come together. Doug Lyle, Jeff Novick, myself, uh, uh, Alec Isabeau, uh, our teacher, uh, you know, some of our, I believe some of our cooking instructors are there too. But uh, it's a one weekend. It's for a uh, very, very inexpensive price. It includes all the meals. And uh, it's something we do once a year uh, for people who need a live experience, don't, need, uh, don't have that much time. It's only a weekend, Friday to Sunday. And uh, don't want to invest financially that much, but they still want the live experience. So that's May 13 through 15. You can find that on my website, drmcdougall.com. And we'd love to see you. You know, I've got uh, the whole weekend, uh, Mary and I have the whole weekend dedicated to spending time with you and getting to know you and talk to you and so on. And you're going to be there, Gustavo, aren't you? I am. I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. So uh, if you want to join us, I, I would encourage you to come. Uh, Andrew, you're welcome, too. In fact, yeah, I'd, I'd yeah. <laughs> in fact, in fact, uh, it would be a privilege someday in the near future to have you uh, uh, come all the way from Australia, you and your wife, at, at, at our expense to one of our advanced study weekends, and uh, really? tell your story. Yeah, sure. Let, let's let's plan on that. It, it may be a year, year and a half from now, uh, but I think it would be a, a very, very good to have you. We had uh, the uh, I dreamed of coming to your advanced study weekends. That would be uh, amazing. Well, we get you as a speaker, and that way we'll pay your expenses. So oh, that wow. Be, yeah. We had the uh, <laughs> head of the Washington State Washington Potato Commission talk, and he gave a talk on potatoes uh, because he went on an all-potato diet. Do you remember that, or did you run across that guy? Yeah, uh, when I was researching before I started this, I did find him, and, yeah, he's, he's got a really interesting story too, yeah. yeah. I believe we have his story on our website. Uh, maybe, maybe we didn't put his lecture up, but... He's the, the former head of the State of Washington Potato Commission, and he went on an all-potato diet for, I think, two months, lost 30 pounds, dropped his all the same things that happened to you. Uh, in response to the, the maligning of potatoes, in response to people telling lies about potatoes, he just said, uh, you know, I'll prove it to you that uh, potatoes are healthy, and he did what you've done which was published by Kahn in 1928, which was done by uh, Mikhail Hinhidi back in the 1800s, uh, a, a, a controlled experiment, which has been done by, as I say, hundreds of thousands of people because it was necessity. The necessity uh, they had was starvation. The necessity that we all have in the world today is gluttony, and, you, and it is just as destructive as starvation. All right. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. And uh, we have one little more surprise, which is a video from way oh, okay. back. 
Are, are we getting to that time of the day where we have to quit, Gustavo? <laughs> we have to quit, and uh, yeah, we uh, are. this has been, thank you, Andrew, you're on screen now. I just want to say thank you for, for being here today, and hopefully we will see you in the near future, and you will look even half the way, the way that, that you look now, and, and oh, be healthy. Thank you so much for having me on. I've, I've really enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, spot up, everyone. Very good. Thank <laughs> you. Everybody's inspired. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Any other things that we've forgotten to mention before well, we go? You know, just, just remind people, again, you know, you've lost 70, 80 pounds, and uh, uh, the, it, it, the thing is, as I started this conversation, the, th the question is never, is never will it work? It always works. Right. You know, just right. like an alcoholic always sobers up when they stop the vodka in the gin. You know, a cigarette smoker always has improvement in their lung function when they stop the cigarettes. Uh, if you are sick from food poisoning, which is what my website is about, and I want you to go and share with your friends uh, my whole discussion on uh, Dr. McDougall's colored picture book on food poisoning and how to cure it, you will always always get better. I mean, there's some scar tissue left over, you know, like from my years of smoking. I have no doubt that my lungs would be in better shape now if I hadn't had that 20-pack years of smoking the point before I was smart enough to stop. I mean, there are some residual problems that are left from this dietary abuse that has gone on. You know, your arteries probably have calcium and scars in them, and, you know, you might even have a bit of breast cancer and prostate cancer, as about half the population has. Uh, you know, you have too high a cholesterol and your balls aren't working good and they've probably got some kinks and crooks in them and, you know, there are some sort of things left over, but I mean, stop the damage, you know, stop so that now when you get to be 70, like Mary will be in 10 mm -hmm. days, you can be out skiing with the grandkids and, uh, enjoying life, enjoying life and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, have a spouse or a, a close friend or whatever that can uh, feel about you like I feel about Mary. I mean, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever met. And she's 70 years old and she somehow gets prettier every year. <laughs> yeah, I just, what can I say, ladies and gentlemen? What, can, you what say? can I say? <laughs> uh, you, life on earth is limited. You might as well take full advantage of it. You're right. Well, thank you. Again, we will close today's webinar with a video from the early times. From my early, early days. It, early this days. is a surprise to me. Okay. I hope, yeah. I hope to you know, stay in touch on the website, folks. I hope to see you May 13th. Uh, we have upcoming 10-day programs for you to visit. And I'll be here next uh, next week. We'll be talking about probably heart disease next week. Yes. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting, uh, as usual. Uh, webinar. So we will see everybody next week. All right, let's see what okay, you got. Here we're going to take from a the, look at from the, uh, from the past years. From the way past this years. This could be 30 years ago or 20 years ago. Let's see what you picked up. I think of osteoporosis and I think of a little old lady, if I can say that, curled up over a cane. Dr. John McDougall is here to tell us if that's true, false, somewhere in between. When you say osteoporosis, what is it? Well, just the fact that you say you have that picture tells you what a common disease it is, or at least the knowledge of it is so common. I think the first thing that we have to start out with is the fact that osteoporosis is a disease. In other words, it's not a natural part of getting older. The way women were designed is their bones are supposed to last till they're 80, 85 years old, just like the rest of their body. But the way it is today, you know, bones are dissolving away at 40, 45, 50, Why? 55. Well, there are lots of theories out there, and unfortunately, some of these theories are tied to business, to economics. For example, the idea that it's a lack of calcium. Very common. In fact, I would guess that most listeners out there believe that the problem is not enough calcium and the solution is to drink extra milk and to take various kinds of antacids. Well, the popular press and you see the commercials, they do indicate you take a certain antacid or you eat this or that and it's going to make a difference. You really mention it. You see the commercials. Most of that message is commercial, either direct or indirect. 
You know, if you look through the scientific literature, what you find is the scientific literature tells us that there's plenty of calcium in the food. I'm talking about rice, potatoes, vegetables, fruits. There's plenty of calcium in the food. And adding extra calcium really doesn't make a difference as far as bone strength goes. And I think probably one of the most interesting things that's recently come out is an article in the British Medical Journal. It was January 1989. Two different issues, they carried this article that was titled Calcium Supplementation of the Diet, Not Justified by Present Evidence. And they go through and they review the literature on calcium intake and how it affects the bones. And their conclusion is, is calcium does not build stronger bones, as the advertisers would like us to believe. I mean, after all, what are they selling us? They're selling us lots of dairy products. They're selling us lots of antacids with uh, uh, calcium in them. They're selling us other types of calcium pills. Uh, they have a vested interest in it. Well, what about all of these other supplements we've got here well, on the table? These, these, these are calcium supplements. You know, they kind of fit in with the type of belief that people have in this country, and that is that diseases that we suffer from are due to deficiencies. And so people take supplements such as these, they take uh, megadose vitamins, they worry about getting enough protein and so on. But the truth of the matter is, Lena, is we don't know people with deficiency diseases. I mean, we don't have any friends with scurvy, beriberi, pellagra, none of your relatives went to the doctor with protein deficiency this year. What we have in our society are diseases of excess, such as excess calories. So that's causing the bones to weaken? Well, it's not excess calories. We have problems of excess calories, excess fat, uh, excess salt, and so on. It's another excess, a dietary excess that's washing the bones away. And in this case, it's excess protein intake, particularly animal protein intake. And the studies that have been done since the 1930s show this. But I think one of the interesting things that people can relate to is worldwide occurrence of this disease. Think about the places where people consume the least calcium. I think to mind would come your a African and your Asian countries. And if you think about the teeth and bones of these people, you know, based on what you've seen in travels or travel logs, or if you study it like I have, you find the strongest teeth and bones are in your Asian and African people while they live in these countries and eat a rural type of diet where they have lots of rice and corn and other types of grains and fruits and meat intake is very small and so is dairy product intake. In fact, they don't consume dairy products until they move to Western society. Well, I've certainly got to the age where I'm worried about this. Thank you very much for giving us the information.